Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So this slide here is from Saleh, which is a town outside the Rabat in Morocco. And uh, Baki will know um, who, okay, make sure your uh, everyone's uh, mics are muted, so there's no feedback. Uh, Baki will know some of these students here. I took some of the students to Morocco. And uh, on one of these days, uh, my father who came with me, uh, we went to a, a small town in Morocco and all of a sudden he pointed and says, 50 years ago, when I was stationed here, I had a birthday party in this restaurant and the restaurant hadn't changed in 50 years. It was quite amazing. So that day, my father took the boys to uh, Volubilis, to the Roman ruins, Volubilis, outside of Mule Idris. And I took the two girls there. We went to the shore of Saleh, of this small place outside of Rabat. And that picture is, is of that coastline. And it's just amazing. You're walking along the coast here, and suddenly the, the waves will crash, and they will vent up into this huge jet d'eau, this huge fountain of water. It's the most, it's tremendous. It was amazing. And we were walking along that shore, and we came to a, a, a Sufi shrine. And of course, the mosques are not accessible to sort of outsiders. And so, but this tomb, they just invited us in. And so the girls got to see for the first time, you know, something you know, very special about Morocco. So we were in the saint's tomb. Uh, and then as we were walking out, I told the story that Ibn al-Arabi uh, was on this same uh, shoreline. And when he was on this shoreline, Ibn al-Arabi met one of the Abdal, one of the alternates. When one of them comes, the other one, uh, one leaves, one takes their place. And it's his or her place that they take because Ibn Arabi was asked, uh, why don't you just say that there are seven men or 40 men in these special positions? And Ibn Arabi says, because uh, it's often women. And so that's, so he calls them souls or men and women. Now, when he met this uh, substitute or alternate, he, was, he just started complaining. He said, we have such a tyrant in the land. We have such an oppressive tyrant in the land. And the alternate immediately said, stop, don't talk like that. What is it between, what, what are you to come between the master and his slave? So Ibn Arabi understood this to me, who am I to come in between God's will and the creatures that God created? And Ibn Arabi then told us, right after that, he says, you know, even the greatest among us often forget, even the greatest among us often forget that this world was not made for us. It was made for God. And God made it the most perfect and complete way that God wanted it to be. And so the world is perfect because it is suiting and it is doing exactly what God wants it to do, the one who created it. And of course, if I created the world, it would be a different world. And Ibn I'd be saying, it's not my world. It's not the world that I created. And then a little less difficult to absorb, he then tells another story. And he says that Aisha was going to the Kaaba and she used to pray inside the Kaaba. But this time, the key holders, the uh, Banu uh, Shaiba, the key holders didn't let her enter in. And so she uh, went to the, her husband and said, the key holders are not letting me into the Kaaba. And the Prophet wasalam, said to her, pray here by the hijr, by the half wall, that half wall near the Kaaba, because this is the true Kaaba. And Ibn Arabi says, no one, no one holds the keys to keep out access to God. No one can make God inaccessible to us. And so, so we have to find, and now we have to find where that access place is, but that if the key holders, the people who are trying to keep you out of the Kaaba or somewhere else, if they do good, then good for you and good for them. If they do bad, 
it'll be bad for them, but good for you. And Ibn Arabi explains that they, whether they do good or bad, it's on them. But for us, whether they do good or bad, it's good for us. If they do good, then we have a nice dunya, a nice life. If they do bad, then we will be recompensed for what we've gone through in the next world. Just the way sicknesses and travails and trials are ways that the fortunate people have the crust of, of lower self taken away. So if you're fortunate, your lower self, its crust will be taken away while you are alive in this world. And if you're unfortunate, it will be taken away for you when one gets dropped into the fire and all of the crust that has accumulated gets burnt. You see, we have a lower self. Our, self, our soul is, needs to be guided. And one of the great guidances of the soul is the fast of Ramadan. And the fast of the month of Ramadan is where I tell my soul that you will get what you need, but you just have to wait. And then after a while, after a month, after a few of these Ramadan months have gone by, at some point my soul has become well-trained and realizes that when I say, you'll get what you need, let's just stay in line and not go to the front. Let's be generous and not try to hold on to everything. At some point, this guidance of myself means that my lower self becomes guided. And this is the, the hobbles on the camel, the iqal, the hobbles on the camel are what makes me able to eat enough of the grass that's around me, but not to go so far away that I could hurt myself and others. And so a well-trained soul is, that's, the, what, that's what we need to do. We need to learn that uh, we are not the center of the world. We need to learn to get away from arrogance. I need to tell my lower soul that you'll get what you need, but you'll have to get it when it's appropriate for you. And if I'm fortunate, I've done this in this world. If I'm not fortunate, then the crust and the crud and the injuries that I cause myself and other people, that will come back on me. Uh, that will be a bad karmic coming back, karma coming back on me. And then that person goes and gets thrown into this fire. And all of this crust and crud is going to have to be burnt away in the fire. And then the angels will be instructed to pull out that piece of charcoal. It'll be like a piece of charcoal. And they will take that person, if that person is of the family of the garden, to the garden, to the river of life, drop the charcoal in the river of life, and they will come out whole and sound. Because as Abu Madian, Ibn Arabi's teacher, told him, no one enters the garden who has even a sesame seed amount of arrogance or ego. So this is uh, the, the, the first, so I told this story uh, as we were walking along this beautiful shore where exactly Ibn Arabi had walked before. And now let's go into our second slide. Let me see how that works. Okay, can we all, everyone seeing, just sort of wave your hand if you can see the new slide, the, the clay, okay, good, slide of clay. All right, I think I have to pull this over so we can see it better. There we go. This one right here. And so, well, oh, we, well, we jumped. Let me go. We did jump. I think we'll do this, kind of move a little bit quickly through this, but this is something that Sinan uh, was talking about uh, when we were in Berlin and in Vienna, we talked about this. In Vienna, we talked about this, the 10 worlds. Now, Ibn Arabi keeps having us look at both sides, two sides all the time. On this side, there's Ein Wachta, the single entity, many names, many adjectives, many verbs. So this is the divine. The divine is a single entity, a single that, a thing, single essence with many names, Rahman, Allah, uh, Mumid, Muhid, uh, Awwal, Akhir, etc. And many adjectives, generous, uh, kind, uh, vengeful, 
wrathful. All of these adjectives are coming from this single entity. And many verbs, does things. And there's no one that does but God. And on the other side, there's this Ein Wachta, the single entity, which is you. And this single entity has many properties, uh, many colors, and many variegations. So you are colored and propertied and variegated. And from that side, the light hits the body, this prism, and from and then cast from this light hitting the body are shadows. And there are 10 shadows or more. And the way we're getting 10 right now is at the bottom, you see this triangle, one, five, 10, 10, five, one. This is, one is a, is, um, it just passed me, a non-dimensional number. Five are lines, five lines, 10 uh, planes, so a line and then a plane. And then 10 volumes, five hyperspheres and one hyper hypersphere. So this, a prism which has one hyper hypersphere, <clears throat> when the light hits it, there will be 10 spherical shadows. Now when a light hits a three dimensional ball, it creates a flat circle on the wall. So a three-dimensional object creates a two-dimensional shadow. And a higher-dimensional uh, body creates 10, this one creates 10 volumes or 10 circles with volume spheres. And each time the look at this prism takes place, I am the reflection or the reflection is me. And this is the moment is the mirror of the mu'min, and mu'min is one of the names of God. So the one who is faithful is a mirror of the one who is the mu'min of God. And this mirror is a mineral like the earth or salt. It's a horse or it's an angel or it's a human. Haq looks at the mirror and you are the image. And that look at the mirror creates 10 U's in 10 worlds or 18,000 worlds, but that gets me to, that's a little bit wild. So let's just stick with 10 worlds for now. That look makes 10 U's in 10 worlds. And it's the same you in every place. So when you dream and you see yourself, it's you. It's not a schizophrenic situation, it is you. And if you see yourself in the Atlas orbit, it's you. If you see yourself in the dream Barzakh, it's you. If you see yourself in the hereafter, it's you. And we then, Ibn Arabi says, we then turn back to this light and say, even though I am from your radiant Tajalli and created square against your image, still you are not me and I am not you. And then the verse, God receives fully the souls at the moment of their death and those not dying in their sleep. So he seizes the one death is decided for them and he sends back the others until a term appointed. Indeed, in this are signs for the people who reflect and consider. So, we are in all of those places. And Ibn Arabi uses the story of Jauhari to, to help us see this multiple positions of our one self, of our single entity. And the story is that Jauhari was taking his dough to the communal oven. And because, in, and this happens in Morocco still, because you don't wanna have a hot oven in your own house in a hot weather, you, take, you make the dough that you want, and you take that to the baker, to the communal oven. You give the, the, the dough in. The baker puts the, the dough in the oven, cooks it beautifully. So while it's cooking, Jauhari goes to the Nile River. And, so, and he is in a state of ritual impurity, so he's going to bathe in the river. So he jumps and into the river. And as he's down in the river, as he's submerged in the river, 
He is in Baghdad and he's there for six years and he marries someone and he has kids with that person. And then he comes out of the water and he goes back, gets his bread <clears throat> and very, very wisely tells his wife what happened because a few months later, a woman with some kids is looking for his house. And when they find it, they say he recognizes them and he acknowledges his kids. And people ask her, how long were you married to him? He says, I was married to him for six years and these are his kids. These are our kids. And so Ibn Arabi says, so then something that happened in the dream world came to happen as well in the earth, heaven, number one in this dunya and so it's the same jauhari it's the same person it's the single entity but he had one experience in one world and another experience in another world and then those two experiences came together and uh, could have potentially caused some serious drama but it worked out because everyone seemed to understand that he was in two different worlds this is the projective space of who this is the projective space the place where the light hits the mirror and projects and casts a shadow and it's exactly where you are right now in other words here i am the earth heaven too is not 10 miles away or 100 miles away the dream world is not five miles away or 20 feet away the dream world is right here and i could be in a dream right now you will see a person sleeping and then ibn arabi tells the story you see someone and he's on the floor sleeping and he looks horrible he looks miserable he's got ragged clothing and you wake him up and then he says why did you wake me up i was in the sultan's palace i was having a feast and i was eating from a beautiful banquet and you woke me up so he was in the banquet eating the food that he was enjoying while his he was also in having a body that the person could see and that is because god receives fully the souls at the moment of their death and those not dying in their sleep pulls the soul out which is doesn't is not a distance issue it's not a measure he doesn't pull the soul out and put it 50 miles away it's right there but it's in a way, it's, a, it's like a prism. If we could imagine a, a screen that is rippled, and as it's rippled, the shadow that's cast on it touches each one of the 10 ripples. So one shadow creating 10 images, shadows on this ripple, it's the same shadow. And one breath comes out of the chest and goes through the mouth. That one breath, that who, goes through the teeth and makes dental sounds like da and ta. And that same breath goes through the palatals and the labials and goes ma like that. One breath, many, many letters. And one look, many, many shadows cast. Okay, I think we had... Uh, um, Habiba, did, did you have uh, you have a raised hand? Salam alaikum, everybody. Okay, I'm, I'm, salam. Yes, yes. Yeah, there's the raised hand. Yeah, I can't see yeah. all the screens at once, but anyway, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm Habiba from Germany, and I'm uh, the one gifted with translating Shuaib when he comes to Europe or to Germany. Yeah, and, and when we were in Vienna and talking about this, um, you, you also introduced us to how to distinguish between the different worlds, because I think this is a very important point. Um, how can we find orientation in these um, different realities? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, just uh, yesterday, like many people who are fortunate to stay home and still have a, a regular life and can watch, uh, watch movies, uh, there's a movie out there with Natalie Portman and they have a shimmer. The people go into this place and everything is a different reality and all of that. 
Um, and I just keep wish I just keep, I can't really watch it because I keep saying, why don't they read chapter eight of Ibn Arabi? They can only read chapter eight because they go in there with guns and they think they have to shoot everything. You know, <laughs> so it's a you know, very American uh, perce perceptive, uh, perception. I've got to just shoot everyone. Uh, so how do we orient ourselves? Ibn Arabi says the way you orient yourself is everything that you do wherever you are is a training and is a worship so that our bodies and we're going to go that's what we're going to go straight to the next uh, uh slide habib was anticipating the next slide and that is because we are made of clay because we are earth that everywhere we go we are grounded in earth and that means that we are a projective screen for the divine so we are worshiping God everywhere we go. So there's no need for guns and no need to fear. See, and so if you go, and people who go into these places, they have fear because they are in a difficult situation. This is the reason and people have bad dreams, nightmares. Uh, people have near-death experiences, which are good and bad. The ones which are bad, sometimes they get turned, that turns them around and says, I better orient myself in this world. So that when I go back to that other world, I will be in shape for it. I will be trained for it. And so, alhamdulillah, we are made out of earth. And this means that everywhere we go, we are in a state of worship. And the divine is, uh, gives us our guide, the, the light of Muhammad, وسلم, who is the rahmah, the kind mercy for all of these worlds. So the kind mercy for all of these worlds is in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I think now, then we come. This this will be I think I, I think will be our last slide. But this is the clay slide. This is going to help us. How do you orient? How do we orient ourselves, knowing that we are in all of these different worlds? And so we have first. Let's look at the top. When I have shaped him, number one and breathe my spirit in him, number two. So when I have shaped him and I breathe my spirit in him, one and two. And then let's read from Ibn Arabi up here. God has made to be houses for the human souls, these nature-based bodies, which he created and evened and balanced, constructed in order for these souls to abide in them, these souls which are in aggregate a word of the truth. So the slide previously, we saw the, the light comes, hits, makes 10 shadows. The breath comes, hits, and makes words. And the words and words are being made. Different sounds, different words. And Ibn Arabi says, it might not be in your nest. He has this kind of a pun in Arabic. Lafs and, and, and uh, lufs, they're two different words, L-A-F-Z means phrase, but it also means the nest of the bird's nest. So Ibn Arabi says, it might not be in your nest to know that the phrases are all Quran, because everything coming out of the breath is coming, is a divine word, and it is you, and it is me. And because it's a divine word, because you are a divine word, and I am a divine word, each moment being breathed into this world, projected into this world, into sounds, words, and, and sentences. Therefore, we are the kalimat, the words of God. And we know that if all of the trees were pens and all of the oceans were ink, still the words of God would not be exhausted. And Ibn Arabi tells us, so that tells you, once you are into this world, once you are created and made as a word, you are a word of God, you never leave. The words of God will never be exhausted. And so once we come into word, into this presence, from pre-eternity, we, we are alive, we're made to die, and then we're made to live eternally. And so, and we are words that continue on and on and on. And something just flashed by that I forgot how to say it, so it might come back. Now, we'll go back to number one, the shaping. The shaping is so who, which is Adam Eve. Uh, we need to always kind of think of it, the first clay there is Adam Eve. 
Um, people, I mean, it's easy to think, oh, this is Adam, and then here comes Eve later. Now, this is Adam Eve, and that's the single word which is split into two. The single word Adam Eve is split into two. Why is it split into two? So that, that reproduction can take place. And Ibn Arabi says, now look at what happened here. Now, as God created the complete human being in two images, that is one shaped, two breathed into. So first shape, then breathed into. First, next. First, last. Awal, akhir. The sight of, this is a whole sentence, so sorry about that. The sight of being arriving in two configurations in which God combines for him the two names, the first and the last, and he provides him with two properties in the outward and the inward. This, so he may be of everything visible and invisible, all knowing. So therefore, he created him from earth. Turab, that's where you get Turbat, and the saint's tomb is called his Turbat, his earth. And the earth is the most descended, lowest site. So we, my heart sees God because when the light hits me, it hits me inside at the heart and then spreads out from there. So my heart sees God, but my eyes don't see God. So my heart says, I see God, but I know my eyes don't see God. And so for my eyes to not see God, but for me to know there is God, this is what's called faith. And faith is seeing what is unseen. I see and know what I cannot see. My insight heart knows and sees God directly. My sight doesn't see God, but knows that God is there and God is what I am seeing. So I have an inside and I have an outside. And I have a first made out of clay. I have a clay body. This physical clay body is a first one. And second, I have breath, soul, breathing existence. So therefore, who, Adam Eve, is the first and the last and the visible and the invisible? And who, Adam Eve, is all-knowing of everything. Thus he made his abode the most noble of places, and he is the center point, fastening the tent support. He made the encompassing cosmic throne to be a place Arahman settles on, the cosmic throne, as a mark, a sign of the divine linkage, which is between the throne and the earth, and what is between the two, the step levels of the spiraling, flowing cosmos, based on orbits and elements. So the entirety of the cosmos is in the interior mouth of the cosmic throne, except the earth, because she is the firmly fixed site of the throne foundation. The throne foundation is sarir, which is also the word for the umbilical cord. So then when God desired to create us for his worship, he brought the path near to us. Thus, he created us from earth, Turab, in the earth, Ard. And this is the earth which God made lower. And that's what I had to remember to say. And we are in the earth when we're running around, like now, and when we're dead. And when we die and our body is in the earth, this is our anchor point whatever tiny bit of body we have in the earth is what anchors us and allows us to continue to be worshiping God because that's how God is worshiped by earth. And wherever we fly in the 10 worlds or in the 18,000 worlds or in how many worlds there are, wherever we're flying around, we are grounded in Mother Earth. And so this is why we love Mother Earth. We are ever grateful that Mother Earth is who we are, where we are, so that all that, wherever we go in the most disorienting of situations, we are oriented in worship of God. Because in these disoriented situations, I was hungry and you fed me not. I was thirsty and you didn't bring me water. And I was sick and you didn't visit me visit me with proper personal protective equipment, but you 
didn't visit me. I was hungry and you fed me not. And this I've learned, this I learned from Bhakti two years ago now. And this is if God wants someone to be fed, or if God wants someone to be embraced, or if God wants someone to receive a good word, you have to be the one who does it. And so Ibn Arabi says that is being in Sabila La. Fi Sabila La. Ibn Arabi says it means being along the way of God. So that he says, if you see a tree and the tree is thirsty and you have some wealth, you use that wealth as zakat to make sure that the water is brought to this tree. This could be the asakia, the, the irrigation canal. And asakia is for the Arabic word, asakia, which brings up the other word, saki, the one who brings the water or one who brings the wine. And so if this tree is going to get water, not from the clouds and the rains and the other mineral and plant and animal ways that it might receive water, but it's going to receive water from you, then you are saki. You are the one bringing water to this tree. And, this, and, you, and saki is the one who brings what's necessary, feeds the person who is hungry. So God's precious creature cries out, says, I am hungry, I am thirsty. And God wants to bring food and water to that person. How does God do that? Let me find someone who has been devoted, someone who understands, and someone who has been taught by the guides. This is the teaching of every mystic guide. This is why service is the, the way we, we describe service as the metaphor for this is the teaching of every mystic guide. The revelations, the law and the prophets, the Torah, the gospels, the folios, all of the teachings of all of the mystic guides is how do you hear the command to bring water to the person who needs it or the tree who needs it. And this process of being trained so that there are people who can do these things for God comes out in a story that Ibn Arabi tells about Mount Arafat during the pilgrimage. So on Arafat, everyone is there disheveled and dust covered and raggedy clothes. And again, as with the Hijr and the Kaaba, uh, we may find that we need to find the Arafat on one of the 10 worlds because we're going to need to go to the Arafat, but it may be in one of the other 10 worlds or 18,000 worlds. And this Arafat, is a place that we go, and it's the same word as to recognize. And it's the same place where Adam and Eve, when they came down, they met each other at Arafat. This is one of them, this is the most momentous day of the year. And on this day, uh, Ibn Arabi tells the story that the hadith that God brings the higher angelic host around him and says, oh, look at that, who are they? And what are they doing? And the angels say, God knows best, but they're here because you told them to come. And God says to the angels, do they hear me? Do they see me? And the angel says, God knows best. They don't see you and they don't hear you. And yet they have come. And so Ibn Arabi says, the angels then begin to think among themselves. And they say, in the Quran, we are told that we are the ones who do what we are told. The angels do what they are told. And they begin to wonder, would we have done all, would we do what we are supposed to do if we didn't see and hear God directly? And they begin to wonder. And Ibn Arabi says, this is why this situation is brought is made to come come to pass. And this is God's joy and delight in seeing a body, some body doing what is on along the way of God. And delight in seeing somebody do these things. And I just, it also just popped out of my head what was supposed to come next, but that's okay. And so this delight is, 
and how do how do these people who don't see God directly don't hear God directly? <clears throat> they hear the teaching of the guides, of the prophets, of the friends, of the mothers. They hear that teaching, and this is the teaching of all the mystic guides. And then they hear what they are supposed to do, and they see what they are supposed to do. And then we go Surat al-Baqara, the, the chapter 2, 30 and onwards, uh, chapter 2, verses 30 and so on. God says to these same angels, and this is why he brought them here to Arafat, he says to these angels, I am going to create a body behind whom I will act. I will create a body behind whom I will act. That's the definition of Khalifa. Khalifa is someone who from behind God acts. And so the angels say, are you going to create someone in her, in the earth, who will uh, corrupt her, pollute her, and shed blood? And God says, I know something you don't know. And what God knows that they don't know is that there's going to be a, this body, this Adam Eve, is going to be taught all of the names. And all of the names are going to be, uh, the, the Adam Eve body will be receptive to all of the names. So all of the, they will be able to be named anything, any of the divine names. They will be able to be described anyway with any adjectives. And they will be able to do as divine verbs anything. And so this is how God gets things done. How, how the prayers of his precious creatures are answered. They're answered by the ones who have heard and learned the teaching of every mystic guy. And so my body is your paradise. So number one, when I have shaped him, this, this clay body, my body is your paradise my soul, your Holy Spirit. So the breathing in is, and the breathing that I have, the who that's breathing through me is the Ruh Al-Quds, it's the Holy Spirit. And Ibn Abi keeps telling, starting so many chapters with, may God give me and you assistance from a Holy Spirit from him. My body is your paradise, my soul, your Holy Spirit, this is a teaching so rarely presented to the world. And I think I have covered most of the things that I, that was, that I needed to say. So let's sit for a moment in the cave of the heart quietly, and then inshallah we'll be able to speak and, and do some other things towards in a few minutes. So let's all sit quietly and uh, in the cave of the heart. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Okay. So. So thanks for being here today. We have such one. Now I've got the galley view so I can see everyone. And that's wonderful. So I think uh, this is Saima here. Okay, Saima, you had a, you had a hand up at some point. Assalamu that... alaikum. Well, I, I actually just yeah I put down my hand because I thought I'd just type in my oh okay oh I'm sorry uh, okay so I, I can see it now okay <laughs> yeah yeah okay well that <clears throat> ten worlds or eighteen thousand worlds that's I'll be this uh, when uh, when uh, in Berlin Sinan and Klaus and I we were we were trying to come up with uh, how can we begin to count some of these worlds how can we have a maybe have a, a handle on some of these worlds and the 10 comes up because Ibn Abbas says, I forgot, I didn't even say it. Ibn Abbas said, this Kaaba is one of 14 Kaabas and there are seven worlds. In each world, there is a creation all the way down to an Ibn Abbas in each one of them. So Ibn Abbas talks about the 14 Kaabas, the seven worlds, Ibn Abbas is in each one of them. And uh, if we look, if, if this whole situation is going to be in a combinatorics, it's going to be this triangle. One, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, 
six, four, one, one, five, 10, 10, five, one. It's going to be a combinatoric. If it's a combinatorics, then the place where 10 volumes comes out is in the fifth dimension. But this is only another metaphor of what's actually happening. Um, and in, and we also have, in, in our tradition, we speak of the 18,000 worlds. Uh, but for me, 10 is enough to put my head around and then 18,000 gets to be uh, that, I'm not sure how, where that's going to be in the common echoic. So if someone wants to go through this, they call it Pascal's triangle to be nice to the French, but the Chinese had it, the Hindus have it, the Arabs had it, everyone had it. But it's called by the French, so what can we say? That's for Bhakti. So the, uh, if you can find out where there are 18,000 volumes in what kind of dimension that has 18,000 volumes, then we would have this kind of number. It's, I'll leave that to Klaus to do that. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so yeah, okay, now I can see, I can see, I'll, okay, 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 I can see some of the chats. All right, good. Well, so the, and then the Holy Spirit is Ruh Al Quds. So R U H Q U D S. And so he talks about the give me, and because in Arabic culture, you say yourself first. So that's why in the Friday prayer, you say, uh, forgive me and you. So you start with yourself and then you go to the next neighbor. Um, and so Ibn Arabi says, give me and you an assistance from a Holy Spirit from who? And then we talked also about kalimat of Allah, the words of, of God. And the clearest, most beautiful uh, presentation for us of words of God, breath of God, spirit of God, is in the, in the person of Jesus, alayhi salam. And so Ibn Arabi loves to speak about Jesus because that's when you're talking directly about how words, how breath go into words. And so, uh, and how the image transforms the human and how these words will, will never end. And that, so that Jesus is a word of God and a spirit of God. And this is, for Ibn Arabi, this is the most beautiful place to see this happening. So anyone who's interested in languages is going to be Jesus-based. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, there's, I mean, the Nord there, Omar is there. So yeah, please, I guess, let's go ahead. As long as we're not feedbacking, let's, let's see what we can do. Um, yeah, Shaib. Uh, yep. you you mentioned that, uh, like, like Ibn Arabi says that uh, we have to be fixed in the earth to exist in the other dimensions. So everybody has to have their fixity in in the earth, right? In in this earth. Um, then I also spoke about the person who who had the swim after he put the dough. He he went for a swim, met the lady, got married, etc. Had a family. And she came across. Now, it, that means that she must have her existence on this earth as well. She couldn't exist in the other realm independently. Right. So, so what happened here? She did not come across. She just came in this world to meet him, not, right. not across. Or, or did I miss? Um... Right. You got it. This, so in other words, so here she is. She twists this way and she's in Baghdad six years married to him and she goes this way and she's in the Nile, wherever that is, and in Cairo, whatever. And so, yeah, that exactly. It. We, we are, so the, the only question then becomes, if we, in all of our existences, which one are we perceiving? And I think we tend to perceive one at one moment. So I'm either perceiving this world or I'm in the dream world and I'm perceiving the dream world. It's very unusual to be able to see both at once. That's called a waking dream that if, or lucid dreaming where you can see both at once. Uh, the beauty is about this because when you sleep and, and, and God takes the soul, uh, then you're, you're not so present in this world. So that's why someone who's sleeping is really not present in this world. And this is a mystery that Ibn Arabi tells us, is that why the Prophet ﷺ said that I don't sleep, I just close my eyes and rest, but he doesn't sleep. 
because he's the Rahma, the kind mercy of all of the worlds. So he can't fall asleep. He has to be present in all of the worlds and not sleep, not be asleep to any one of them. And this is also why then Ibn Arabi explains that be, follow the footsteps of your prophet, follow his lead, that when you die, stay close to your body. And, and because the saints, the peers, the, 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 the friends in their tombs, people come to them and they're there, they are present there so that they can answer their prayers, so that they can bring their prayers up to God. And so they are present. And so Ibn Arabi says, don't go off into the middle of the ocean and drown. Then you're of no good to yourself and you're of no good to anyone else. Stay close to the shore. This is what the friends and the prophets do. They stay close to the shore so they can be there to help us. And so this, and, and they tell me, I've had a number of people who have lived by the tomb of Ibn Arabi. And the one thing they say each time is that he is present there. All the grandmothers are going there and they're getting exactly what they need to get from him. So alhamdulillah. Thank you, Omar. Aha. Well, yeah, there, there's a, the, I, when we're talking now about this idea of reincarnation, and so it's very, I'll just tell a story that I, I met, I was able to meet um, Sidi Sheikh Mohammed. I, I met him about three times. And one of the times, you know, someone was asking him about reincarnation and, and this might have been, you know, maybe a kind of a new age person sort of asking that question. So he said, there is no reincarnation. You have one life and you must do what you must do on this life and then you're going to die. And then he says, on the other hand, <laughs> every moment you are getting a breath and every moment you have carbon body. That carbon body has come from other places. That breath has been through other places. So you may breathe something that was breathed before. And you may, and in your body, there will be lodged in your molecules, molecules that used to be somewhere else in a distant star or in this uh, very nice uh, gazelle or in this tree over there. So those, you share those molecules. So of course we have the experience of reincarnation. We have the experience of seeing multiple shadows at once because it's all coming from one. So hence his wonderful, there's no such thing. And then on the other hand. <laughs> I have a quick question, if I may. Yes, yes. Um, um, hi, thank you for this lovely, um, lovely talk. I, I, I definitely learned and um, felt a lot of uh, um, light uh, from what you said. Thank you. I was just going to ask you to tell me a little more about the um, uh, the Adam and Eve combination, the 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 the, the Aval and Akhar, or the, the the first and the last. Is it okay if you can tell me a little more about that, please? Thank right. you. Okay. Yeah, uh, this started uh, coming up when I was able to be in, in Oxford in October and talking with Aisha and Marta over here, um, that we begin to start thinking, we need to think about Adam Eve as this, this Adam Eve is one. And then as with all single words that split into two coming down to the, from the cosmic throne, splitting into two on the footstools, the left and the right, the, this foot, that foot, do this, don't do this. So everything to be, everything that happens is when one thing is split into two, and then those things are split into another two, bifurcations and bifurcations. And so this, so we are the beginning of that process, and we are the next or akhir or last of that process. And because we have an insight and a sight, we have insight and sight. We have access to what's visible and access to what is invisible. So access to being from the beginning of a shape of a clay and this, the end, the breath, having those two configurations added to having insight and sight makes this human uh, person knowing of all things, of able to know all things. There is no name that can be thrown from the other side to this world 
which is not received by this clay body. So if there were 35 names, this clay body holds and can receive 35 names. If there are 3,000 names, this clay body can receive 3,000 names. There are no names sitting over there that are not being used. Ibn Arabi calls that being idled. There are no names that are not being used. Every one of them is active, active and engaged in this human body. And because this human body can accept every one of those, those divine names and other bodies cannot, fire bodies, light bodies, they do not receive all of these names, but this clay body receives all of these names. And that's why my body is your paradise. Mm. That's how we say it, God. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And then just adding on that question, if I may, and then I think I read somewhere, uh, Ibn Abi talking about how like, um, before the fall of Adam and Eve, um, I think they were kind of, uh, united or something and then when they became aware of each other's um, you know outer form body parts and w that's when they were separated I'm not sure if I understood this correctly or if I'm making sense but um, but I think I read somewhere whereby they became separated from God and then they became aware that they have distinctive external bodies um, I don't know if yeah. well yeah, I mean that's there, there are lots of of course, this is all the mythology around all of that. For Ibn Arabi, it's, it's, it's very, very clear what, what's happening. We have a, this clay body, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is, are taught all of the names. And then in order for them to split so that they can reproduce and make more clay bodies, in order for that to happen, Eve has to be removed from Adam. So when Adam, that happens for Adam, uh, he becomes incomplete. And so, be, and so Ibn Arabi is telling us that, that Adam without Eve is incomplete. And the intellect, or the aql, is incomplete. And so Ibn Arabi says there's, there are two different modes of love. One is the, the, there's, a, there's a male love that says, I am incomplete, and I need what is, was taken out of me to come back to me. And the other is, Eve is complete. Because as what's removed is, is a complete being. So she is already complete. And so her love of Adam is the love of home, which is not the same as the love of what will make me complete. So Ibn Arabi says that's why there are different intensities in these, in these, in these modes of love. So they are, they are put apart so that they can reproduce. They land in Arafat and they can join and, re and separate and join and separate again to create all of the clay bodies that are coming, coming forth. The sky has to be cloven or split from the earth so that things can happen. Um, and then everything that the, the mouth have to, has to be split uh, by shapes so that sounds can come out. The ears are split uh, by, by B and we are. So the ears are split open. So this splitting process is the process, and we can get as graphic as you like, but this splitting process is what creates things, what makes things happen. And so this, we, want, we, we look for this idea of splitting, cleaving. It's interesting in English, cleaving means this is cleaving and this is cleaving. It's, a, there, it's its own antonym. So this splitting process is how things happen that the single word splits into many words, the single entity splits into many word names, the single entity splits into many adjectives, and the single Adam Eve splits into all of human beings. Thank so, you. Alhamdulillah. Okay. All right. Well, I, I think if we've got, let's, if we have about two more minutes and then, uh, we, we kind of keep things short and sweet, but uh, we, we want to try to do this every Friday. And uh, yesterday I was talking with uh, Mustafa, we also might have some kind of session. And I was thinking like Tuesday, the same time, but we can all look into that. But let's in inshallah have our Friday reoccurring the same ID and the same time, if that's okay. And I think uh, we, we ha we're having people from the North American continent, from UK, Europe, 
all the way. We have some people in Pakistan and we have my colleague in Malaysia who is listening in. So that is pretty far. She's 14 hours different from us. So uh, we have quite a span right now of, of, of humanity on this globe. And we are in this earth. And that's why in the Quran, we always have feel art in the earth. And Ibn Arabi tells us that we are in the earth. We're not upon the earth. We're in it. And we will stay in it when we're alive and when our bodies are, are buried in it. We will stay in the earth. Alhamdulillah. So any last questions or comments? <laughs> okay. Yes, I've got one, one question. <laughs> Would there be any possibility to make a contribution for all these indiavis uh, you, you are gifting us with? Yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're uh, th this, this project is called, we call it the, the Futahat project. And it is, uh, there's a small team of people who, who are working on all of these things. Um, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, the editor in France, Rowan, um, and others. And so it certainly is the case that we will be asking uh, people to, to, be able to give support and 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 so this will come out with we'll probably do this through uh, with mustafa doing the the website um mm -hmm. and uh, you can so so when ibn arabi is there standing you know when he when ibn arabi first was was brought in a presence to me this is a friend of mine in canada and he he just he got this the hal and the presence came and ibn arabi was there and he said he was with someone i think he was abu madian so when ibn arabi wants this work to come out when he, the, this is the message that he was told to convey and so when he wants it to come out he's going to have to depend on you and me to do these things so it is something that it's it's not like ibn arabi is going to toss us a piece of a gold coin through the barzakh it's going to be us working together to make sure that this message can come out so alhamdulillah thank you for that reminder alhamdulillah